the humility, sir. That's that's amazing, sir. <laughs> that's amazing, sir. Hi, Murli. Good evening, all. Hi, Vimesh. Namaste. Good evening. Happy Good evening. to be Vimesh. Thanks, Murli. We need good. <laughs> good evening, all. Welcome to Indian Society of Anesthesiologists and World Society of Intravenous Anesthesia joint webinar. First of all, I bring greetings from Indian Society of Anesthesiologists National Headquarters and extend greetings to all revered teachers on Happy Teachers Day. We shall always remain indebted to our teachers who have inspired us, guided us, taught us, and above all, made us a very good human beings. No matter how much gratitude we pay them, it will be always less. So with folded hands, I pay my respect to all teachers in India and abroad. On this Teacher's Day, it is a historic occasion that Indian Society of Anesthesiologists and World Society of Intravenous Anesthesia, the World SIVA, are organizing an international webinar as a part of academic collaboration. This is the beginning of a great partnership. I'm very sure about it. And to showcase it, we have today with us President of Indian Society of Anesthesiologists, Dr. Venkat Giri, Vice President, Dr. Anjali Bure, President-elect, Dr. M. V. Vimeshwar, myself, Dr. Naveen Marotra, the National Secretary, and ably guided and supported by very dear, very respected Dr. Mulidhar Joshi, the chairman of ISA Academic Committee and immediate past president of Indian Society of Anesthesiologists National. Also, we have got Professor Kriyana Opi, the president of World Society of Intravenous Anesthesia, and Dr. Professor Thomas Hammerling from Canada. We have joined from the two corners of the world. And also, I must pay my regards as my teacher also to Professor G.D. Puri, sir, and who has been coordinating this webinar and the collaboration between ISA and World SIVA since last many months. They will be ably supported by our chairpersons, Dr. Tushar Toksi from Badodra. Dr. Nishant Kumar from Delhi, Dr. Arun Biji from Bengaluru, and dear Dr. Amitabh Datta, who has been uh, shouldering the responsibility along with Professor G.D. Puri. So I welcome all the esteemed faculty of this today's webinar, the speakers and the chairpersons, the coordinator for today's program, Dr. Nishant Sahai, past presidents of ISA National, Presidents of ISA state and city branches, governing council members of ISA national and dear delegates to this joint international webinar of ISA and World SIVA. I'm very sure it will be a very, very fruitful academic instruction. Thank you very much. Now, I'll invite Dr. Venkat Giri KM to formally inaugurate this webinar by digital flag hosting and then giving his presidential address. Dr. Uh, Venkat Giri, please, uh, to digitally uh, hoist the ISA flag. Dr. Giri, please. Yeah. Thank you, Naveen. <laughs> Thank you, uh, friends, uh, uh, dignitaries, uh, the Dr. Kirino, Dr. Thomas, Professor Puri, my colleagues uh, in GC, dear friends and uh, anesthesiologists. It's a happy occasion on this uh, Teacher's Day when we respect our river teachers. We have this academic webinar on TIVA in association with uh, TIVA. Uh, with the uh, effects of greenhouse and environment friendly, we are changing from our conventional anesthesia to 
total intravenous anesthesia. So it is the what we have learned at that time has changed when we were uh, well, maybe when I was studying nitrous, halothane, ether, and all. We have changed and we have got safer drugs. We have changed from nitrous now air oxygen mixture and the newer drugs and with the stiva and we are going to give better anesthesia for uh, both for the patient and for our save our environment. Maybe this webinar and collaboration with Siva will take us to further rights. If everything goes all right, future times we will have good collaboration and we'll have more and more, uh, not only uh, webinars, but uh, uh, we have physical conference also in future if everything goes all right and we don't have other problems. So I wish all the best for this webinar. Let this be a beginning on this auspicious occasion of Teacher's Day. And while paying respect to all our teachers, I formally declare this webinar inaugurated for the day. Thank you. Thank you. As we are celebrating our Platinum Jubilee celebrations, this is the 75th year of formation of Indian Society of Anesthesiologists. So definitely I echo the word of President Dr. Venkat Giri that this is just a beginning. We will have more uh, physical interactions maybe uh, in the forthcoming Indian Society of Anesthesiologists National Conference at Shillong and subsequently a bigger conference together. Now it's a pleasure to invite Dr. Murlidhar Joshi Chairman, IAS Academic Committee, to please address the delegates. Dr. Mulida Joshi, please. Uh, good evening, everyone. Respected uh, President of uh, ISA, Dr. Venkat uh, KM, and all the dignities on the dais and off the dais. Uh, uh, welcome, Dr. Quirino. Between four P, busy at coaching to this our Congress, probably you couldn't attend for some personal commitments. Uh, of course, welcome, uh, President of. Uh, uh, the world Siva, and also the board of directors, Dr. Thomas and Dr. Gordon Puri. Uh, we welcome all of you, sir, uh, to this particular uh, webinar. It will be a, a nice interaction during the uh, Platinum Jubilee celebration of uh, Innocent Anesthesiologists because it's a great occasion. Of course, there's always like a, like a bridging kind of thing. There are always uh, debates and uh, discussions and how to go about it. So there was one time, probably we had only Regional anesthesia doing certain things and all. So subsequently, we had some inhalation anesthetics and all. Subsequently, people expressed concern about the ozone layer being perforated, and because of that reason, so much of uh, other problems which are coming up and all, like global warming and all the things, and the ozone hole, big, how big is the hole and all. Now we are uh, walking into the, I should say, occasion of uh, what you call it, the uh, total internal anesthesia, what we say in uh, our country, that's India. And of course, you might be saying, like, you know, so it be international and international anesthesia. Either way, so the same story. While the inhalation anesthetics came with the challenge of uh, ozone layer being perforated, and uh, the, the TY agents, uh, people do express about that, uh, that might be contaminating the soil with uh, phenol and glycol. So, question here is the debate continues on all those things, but the collaboration should stay. Question is, we are all here as science students, and definitely we are always. I would like to learn something new. Let, let's uh, deliberate, let's discuss, and let's debate what might be good. And for this first occasion of uh, coming together, definitely I can see great prospects in coming years. And I have seen my own uh, uh, mentor and teacher, Dr. Gordon Puri, working on the TIVA for uh, more than three decades. I have seen him working at PJ Chandigarh. In this context, I feel, I think probably the world CEO was formed somewhere, maybe around the, the concept start somewhere in 2005, the society was formed. I am just, uh, just looking at all things. 2007 onward, Dr. Kurna is happy to present and all. I know every like, you know, uh, journey starts with uh, first step and the journey thousand months at first step. And in this context, I think World Civil has taken the, the first step. Definitely things are going to evolve, of course, after. Definitely ISA will be happy to collaborate with any kind of uh, scientific events uh, with any other, in any, anywhere in the country and anywhere in the world. These uh, opening remarks, I would like to say thank you once again.
uh, World Siva and ISA to coming together. All the best. Let's keep going. All and my pranam to all my teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mulita uh, Joshi. Now it's my pleasure to invite our Vice President, dear Dr. Anjali Bure. And she, in addition to conveying her best wishes, she will be giving, because she is uh, doing some religious ceremony also. So uh, good omen for uh, this particular webinar. Dr. Anjali Bure, please. Yeah. Good evening, all the dignitaries. I would like to greet all the attendees of ISA and members of World Society of Intravenous Anesthesia for a joint webinar on uh, TIVA and academic bonanza in the year of Platinum Jubilee celebration. Now, ISA always encourages such activities on international forum. I congratulate you all and extend my warm wishes and gratitude to all the teachers in the world and seek blessings from Lord Ganesha. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anjali, for, for those greetings. So I'll request uh, now our president-elect, uh, Dr. M. V. Vimeshwar, uh, who will take over in November and carry on the academic collaboration between uh, ISA and World Siva. Dr. Vimeshwar, please. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Naveen, for giving me the opportunity. And uh, good evening, uh, Mr. President and all the dignitaries, uh, uh, faculty of the World uh, Society of Intravenous Anesthesia. It's a wonderful beginning for the Indian Society of Anesthesiologists and the World Siva to form a collaboration and start a webinar of this, of this magnitude. And uh, happening on the Platinum Jubilee Year of Anesthesia is another feather in the cap for the ISA. I'm sure we will be having many more collaborations like this with other societies because uh, we have been getting feeders, feeders from uh, other societies that uh, they would like to partner with the Indian Society of Anesthesiologists for exchange of uh, thoughts and all. And I'm sure it will happen. And uh, thank you very much, Naveen, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, thank you very much. I wish this uh, webinar all success. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vimeshwar. Before I hand over to the, our coordinator, Dr. Nishan, I'll request Professor G.D. Puri, sir, to say a few words. Dr. Puri, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, the President, uh, Indian Society of Anesthesiologists, my friend Naveen, the Secretary, other dignitaries of the ISA, and our guests from uh, Italy as well as uh, from Canada. It's a uh, it's a historic day that uh, uh, I am being part of the uh, first webinar between Indian Society of Anesthesiologists and uh, World Society of Intravenous Anesthesia where not only the president of uh, SIVA is participating, but also the, the, the academician, researcher, and innovator like uh, Thomas Hammerling from uh, uh, Canada is also presenting his uh, experiences and uh, 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 about the mass relax and other things. Uh, I'm sure the efforts which we have started, and I thank Naveen for taking this initiative, taking my suggestions further, I'm sure all the um, uh, members of the governing body of Indian Society of the Sociologist, the way they have expressed in this uh, uh, introductory remarks, their, uh, the, the futuristic attitude of uh, collaborating with the international societies, uh, not uh, to produce two-way uh, uh, collaborations, two-way exchange of uh, information and two-way uh, you know, improvement both the other societies as well as for our own society. That should be the uh, goal and hallmark of our collaboration in the future. Thank you very much, Naveen, and the President, uh, uh, Dr. Venkat Gree, for giving the opportunity to uh, share the dais. Yeah, thank you, sir, respected sir, and it's an honor uh, to be accosted by you. So nice of you. And, I, and now I'll hand over to Dr. Nishan, and I'll request Dr. Thomas Hammerling also that when you start your talk, sir, just... Uh, express a few words from you because Dr. Kirino will be talking about the brief overview of World Siva. In addition to your talk, I would like to listen your uh, thoughts also, sir, uh, on this academic collaboration. Dr. Thomas Hammerling. I have had um, over the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, many um, collaborations actually with India before. Um, as some of you know, <clears throat> my research interests are very broad. I've started uh, having an interest in using epidurals for cardiac anesthesia and doing awake cardiac surgery and was inspired 
what, what my Indian colleagues had done before. Uh, the poor and myself share uh, the common wish that robotics might at, uh, in the future uh, replace us so we can all sit at home and let the robots work. Um, and I'm coming back to my first love in research uh, during this talk with this muscle relaxants based on what I had shared with Indian colleagues throughout the pandemic. I believe that Quirino had the great idea to partner with India. Why that is a great idea? Because India for me is the future. We probably in Canada and the US, we are the past, but you guys in India, you are the future. There will be many developments which I can see in India coming over the next two or three decades. I believe that India is a strong force, not only politically, but economically and scientifically. And if the collaboration with BISA and World Seaver can help make this flourish, I'm very happy to be helpful. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, your uh, thoughts, sharing your thoughts with us. And definitely, we look forward to more academic collaborations. Uh, over to you, Nishant, for uh, the Kenya uh, the further proceedings. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, sir, every Monday we have these ISA online PG classes. And uh, today is the 59th of the series. But I guess this is the first time that we have had an international collaboration. And this is a historic day, the Teachers Day 2022, where we have an international academic program where we do not, not only do we have our uh, uh, GD Purisa from India, but we have two very prominent international figures, uh, Dr. Krino Piachiboli and Dr. Thomas Hemmerling, sir. So it is an absolute uh, pleasure to have both of them uh, along with our uh, respected faculty members. So uh, for the day, the plan for the day, sir, will be that uh, we'll be having a brief overview of World Siva by Dr. Kirino Piacevoli first, and then he'll be uh, telling us about from MCI to TCI. Thereafter, we'll be having a talk by Dr. Thomas Hemmerling where he'll be discussing world relax uh, relaxation revisited for 2022, the best practices. And finally, Dr. G.D. Puri, sir, uh, will let us know about uh, CLADS, the automated anesthesia. And uh, for these sessions, sir, we will be having uh, very reputed chairpersons. And the first uh, session will be chaired by three very eminent and very respected uh, uh, academicians from India. Uh, Dr. Murli, uh, Murli Joshi, sir, Murli Dhar Joshi, sir. Uh, he is an MD and DNB and the head of department of pain medicine and director of the pain management center at the Virinci Hospital in Hyderabad. He has uh, he's a vastly experienced and has a very reputed uh, clinician for pain education and interventional pain management with more than 27 years of experience, many articles and six book publications. And uh, some of the achievements uh, he has is that he's the first, he had the first Android application in the world on interventional pain management. Uh, he was the first to start a fellowship in pain management in India, first to author a textbook of pain management in India, and first to start e-learning in pain management in India. Uh, he has won the Academic Excellence Award in 2010 by the ISA, and he himself has been a president of the ISA from 2019 to 2021. He was the uh, GC member of the WFSA from 2016 to 2020, and the, uh, he's currently also the member of the WFSA Safe Anesthesia, and Quality of Practice Committee uh, from 2020 to 2024, a member of the WFSA Pain Relief Committee from 2016 to 2020, a board member of the Asian and Australasian Regional uh, Section of WFSA, is the sub-editor of the pain section of ATOTW, the tutorials of WFSA, and uh, he was the General Secretary of uh, Indian Society of Study of Pain, ISSP from 2015 to 2018, Honorary Treasurer of ISA 2012-14 uh, and a reviewer of various national and international journals. So it is a very warm uh, welcome, uh, Muridhar Joshi, sir. Next, we have our president, Dr. Venkatgiri KM, sir, as a chairperson. He's the president, current president of the ISA and the SARC Association of Anesthesiologists. Uh, he, he not only is in MD in anesthesia, but he's done his MBA, DFI, CA, PDD, MLE and PGD, HM. He is currently a senior medical consultant at the General Hospital Kasar Board in Kerala and a member of the Kerala Health Services. He, uh, he has been the past secretary and GC member of the ISA National, past president and secretary of ISA Kerala, past president and secretary of ISA Kasar Board and a professional well-being committee of WFSA from 2016 to 2024. 
uh, past joint secretary and vice president of IMA Kerala, past president and secretary of IMA Kasar board, and has attended more than many, many state, zonal and national international conferences of uh, ISA and other associations also. And obviously he's chaired and uh, given many, many talks in the various conferences. He's also a co-author of the uh, Indian Society of Anesthesia Compression Only Life Support Guidelines, the ISA Coles Guidelines. A very warm welcome, uh, Venkat Giri, sir. And sir has been a constant support for the ISA online PG class. He is always present for most of the classes. And uh, thank you for the encouragement, uh, sir. A third chairperson uh, will be Naveen Malhotra, sir. He was our own secretary, the ISA National. He is a senior professor and head of pain management center at the PGIMS Rotak in Haryana. He won the ISA Bhopal Award for Academic Excellence in 2015, the KPR Young Anesthesiologist Award in 2009, and many, many publications, more than 200, and many presentations, more than 415. And the fact uh, that we consider him as him as our own uh, secretary, I, I believe that that is his achievement. So uh, a very warm welcome uh, to all of you gentlemen, uh, the three chairpersons. And I'd uh, kindly request you to uh, introduce uh, the speaker for the day. Thank you, Nishan, for the, that wonderful words for all of us. Can we have the uh, slides uh, of Professor Kirma, please? So, uh, Dr. Giri, uh, please do the honors. I, I think uh, okay. uh, uh, whether we should read the guideline, uh, this thing, or we uh, can. Uh, Professor Kirino is the visiting professor at the university campus, and he is the visiting professor of the university at Saint Cyril, and he is the head of the department of anesthesia and uh, <laughs> anesthesia and intensive care at San Filippo uh, near Hospital, Rome, Italy, and he is affiliated as the president of the World Scientific Society of Anesthesia, TIVA TCI. He is the board member of Quality and Safety Commission of World Federation of Society of Anesthesia, WFSA, president of Clinical Research Society, member of Board of Federation of European Test Medicine, and his areas of expertise are pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of hypnotics, opioids, and sedatives, pathophysiology of the cranial trauma, cerebral microdialysis, and other highlights are his clinical risk management in intensive care and anesthesia and his new research on molecular basis of anesthetic agents. He's a great man, and uh, he's the president of the society. And it's over to Professor Quirino for his deliberations. Thank you for this uh, very warm and kind presentation. Uh, I don't want to speak about myself, but uh, I want to start uh, to speak of a world society. And uh, this is a very, very short presentation. And uh, uh, I will talk about uh, what uh, uh, this world society has made, is doing still around the world. And uh, you can see this is a very important, I am very proud of this initiative of uh, our world society. This is the official announcement in which we say the COVID emergency also raids coin, or rather gratitude towards that category of people immediately at the forefront of fighting the epidemic, the healthcare professional. According to the definition reported in the official Gazette of 10 December last broke in. In fact, in the course of 2021, a new two euro coin will be minted. The denomination that in some circumstances became a collector item dedicated to all those who treat and assist COVID patients around the world. Doctors, nurses, health personnel of all kinds. A man and a woman will be depicted on the coin, both with the gown and the mask, side by side, but slightly cut, he with a briefcase under his arm, she with a stethoscope around his neck, overlaid by an inscription, thank you, surrounded by a stylized red cross and a heart. 
This is the coin. I'm very proud because the coin is something that is the only one in the world and my initiative is the only one around the world. The New York Times, the Japanese uh, and uh, many, many important journals ask me how I succeed to make this. I don't know. I forced all my politicians in the European Commission in my country that we need to thank anesthesiologists and intensivists because they died to help the patients. And uh, the other very important uh, initiative, when I, I uh, the most important uh, Nobel Prize 2016, Sir Francis Stoddard, uh, award, uh, during the award ceremony, pre, uh, prized me for the best and original research. This was a great achievement for the world society. Why? Because we uh, report about uh, an important article that is very famous around the world about the impurities and the stability state testing study of three different commercial formulations of sevoflurane the widely used fluorinated inhalation anesthetic agent. In other words, the background of a study that takes many years in one of the most important university of Italy, Politecnico, uh, is the synthesis, how the, was made the synthesis of sevoflurane and which kind of degradation products we obtain. Also, the determination in sevoflurane containments of water and fluoride anions. And also, of course, the most uh, important part, but also the most difficult part, how to detect the volatile impurities. This is another important achievement. Another Nobel Prize uh, man uh, very, very famous, Ben Faringa, prized me for another important study. And uh, this is uh, the, a dream for me because uh, I think uh, that for an anesthesiologist is the maximum that uh, I can obtain. For this study, I discover a new status of the volatile, uh, of the uh, um, agents, anesthesiology agent that uh, we know are volatile, gas and uh, liquid. And uh, I discovered another status that is a solid. And uh, uh, I cannot show the work because uh, it's under protection for you understand is a, a lot, a lot of money. I gave all this my study for free. I don't want money because I believe that the humanity must have something from our uh, uh, work free, not always with money. So we are uh, working on this and uh, uh, this is uh, um, my, I, want, I don't want to spend with the other news, but every one of you can go to our web, is a worldsiva.org, because we are no profit organization, and see all our activity, like uh, uh, world congresses around the world, webinar everywhere. And I can say one thing, I support the, agreement of uh, uh, Emerling. I have been many, many times in India and always uh, I learn a lot from my colleagues and uh, I uh, have a, a warm uh, welcome everywhere in any part of India and a very, very good collaboration from this start my idea. So now I go to directly to my presentation. You see uh, 
with, I would like to talk very briefly uh, about the PKPD intravenous drugs for anesthesia, past, present, and future. For future, I think that uh, um, Puri will be much more uh, complete than me. Um, this is my disclosure. Uh, we are obliged to do, and uh, none to declare as a president and all the other um, role. And uh, I think that... Uh, no, sir, can you please switch on your video? Your video. Sorry? Your picture is not coming, your video. Oh, okay, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, now? Now her his picture is coming, you can share the slides now. Now it's okay. Oh, sir, your video goes off when you start sharing your slides. It's okay. And your video has bent off, sir. Only slides are visible. Your face is not visible. Non capisco perché non si vedono la tua faccia. Okay. Non capisco. It's okay now. All good, sir. Full screen, all good. And now? And now? Yes, sir. Everything is fine, sir. Please go ahead. Okay, fine. I was worried about... <laughs> I have my assistant because I'm not so clever. Um, I think that we need to consider in our uh, preparation as doctor and as an anesthesiologist, uh, uh, three important pillars. The first one is the pharmacodynamics that we know is the study of the biochemical and physiological effects of drugs on the body and their mechanism of action. The second one is the pharmacokinetics. On the contrary, studies the effect that the body's processes have on the drug, like absorption, distribution, metabolism, elimination. But there is another new one that is the pharmacogenetics. The pharmacogenetic is the study of how person's genes affect the way he or she responds to drugs. For this, we have a lot of variety about the response to the drugs. Pharmacogenetic is being used to learn ahead of time what the best drug or the best dose of the drug will be for a person. This is really important. So if we want to come back to the first study about PK and PD interhuman variability, we know that if we change the dose, we have a variability in the effect. And the PK variability is, it was measured in that time about 35, 70%. This is, is the famous study of Dr. Vujic the Holland doctor. And uh, the variability of uh, PD was uh, around 300 and 400 percent. Now this value are not anymore true because uh, uh, as I told before, the pharmacogenetic changed the, parano the panorama. And now the PD variability is around 1,200. And how we can measure this uh, uh, we know that if, you, if we change the doses, uh, we change also the effect. And uh, here, uh, uh, it's a, a very uh, simple uh, example of uh, the dosage with the TCI that we keep in the same linear uh, um, uh, continent. And uh, so we can measure the, the effects and the variabil individual variability with other devices that can be the EEG, the BIS, or 
other system. In other words, uh, if we go to the tailor, uh, we cannot we cannot ask the same dress. What is important, and we know every day when we go to BOA, we need to make a differentiation because one size does not fit to everyone. This is just the table of contents that I would like to talk. I don't know if I succeed. PKPD new concept. I would like to talk about the first uh, interaction, hyp hypnotics and the opioids PD interaction. And uh, we know that the modern balance anesthesia is considered free area that is uh, unconsciousness and amnesia, control of stress response, and on the other side, the muscular relaxant. But we must understand that the drugs that we are using are not focused only on this action. If I take in consideration inhalation agents and or hypnotics, I can see that the action and so for the other drugs like analgesic drugs and mask relax, the action is more complex than only on the area of unconsciousness and amnesia. In fact, the, we know that the opioids enhance the action of uh, hypnotics and the you know, hypnotics enhance the action of uh, opioids. And in the same time, we have uh, for the analgesic drugs that opioids plus hyp hypnotics enhance neuromuscular block. And also <coughs> uh, for neuromuscular block uh, can enhance the action of uh, hypnotics. And uh, so it's very complex uh, this situation. So we can define the interaction between the drugs that we are using in, in four way, additive, synergistic, So you'll have to unmute yourself and uh, your video, video is also not showing yet, sir. Now it's okay. Yeah, the slides are coming. Uh, the video has to be switched on. We do it off. Okay. Yeah, all good. It's good. Okay. The third one is clinical and the instrumental signs that indicate the deaf anesthetics, Richard. How we can have the control of anesthesia components? what and how much drug was administered. The first concept is only used for intravenous drugs as for anesthetic vapors. 
We think in terms of a concentration that is partial pressure and vapor pressure and not of weight or volume used. This is a really important. B, the concept incomplete and insufficient because it does not take into account the pharmacokinetics. An equal amount of a drug given in different individuals by age, gender, weight, and weight can determine plasma and effect site concentration very different, and therefore clinical responses of different strengths. Here we have a, a sigmoid concentration for a single drug. And you can see the probability of a, a response we can say is a C50. We have a 50% of a probability in our patients to give the effect that we expect. But it depends on different concentration for different drugs. Here, the effect concentration curve for each drug in which uh, effect and concentration depends uh, of the inclination of the curve that gives the therapeutic margin. So from EC50, we have ED50 that uh, teach us which is the best uh, dosage to give to our patients. Here are the different uh, bologram. In the first one, we have uh, the additivity, and you can see that the two drugs, the one and the two, we need to have uh, the same quantity and to uh, sum the all uh, the two uh, drugs. In the B, we have a, a, a synergism, uh, and we can see that we need less drugs in D1 and D2, and we can uh, make a different uh, situation and to adapt uh, which best of this drug we can in increase or diminish, it depends from our patients. The last one is typical is the antagonism. And I have seen sometimes some anesthesia, anesthesiologists that uh, make this big mistake. This is a sigmoidal concentration response relation for two drugs. And you can see the drug effect here, okay? And on this, the drug A and drug B. And what is important that this uh, uh, sigmodal, sigmodal concentration response can catch all the surface. It's not just a line. It's a just a, a, a situation where we can understand if uh, we modify one of these parameters, modify also this. And uh, this uh, is uh, the response surface model for anesthetic drug interaction is uh, one of the most famous uh, work of Charles Minton, my friend, he was uh, the vice president of WorldSIVA. And the surface showing relations to standard isobologram. This three dimensional surface relating drugs A and B with a probability of no response conventional isobolographic analysis, whether for doses or concentration, only produce the line, this one. At the 50% probability, this, okay, as shown in the lower figure and fails to capture the full surface of the shape that is this one. So we cannot understand how increasing or decreasing some drugs, you can move from this point. In other words, I, I would like to simplify the, with this concept that we created. But above all, in periods of pairs that it is not the addition of two persons, but the generation of a third individu individuality. 
that is more than an addition. It is a new idea such as the water that is formed by hydrogen and the oxygen, but is neither hydrogen nor oxygen. Okay, uh, we have no time. I think that uh, uh, anesthesiologists uh, uh, want that our patients will be very stable, also for very coronary art. <laughs> and uh, to have this effect, we must be a, a very good um, doctor in order to keep the effect and the concentration and in the right place in order to have a dynamic and pharmaceutic and kinetic that is more possible stable and not in the curve where uh, the action will be uh, increased to be as stable and it's important to know as told before, the EC50. Well, which are the new concepts in pharmacokinetics? The three compartmental pharmacokinetics model with the further compartment, the effect site, time to peak effect, KO, T half KO, and contest sensitive half KO, half time. Uh, I think that everyone knows the tricompartimental theory. We have the central compartment that is the bud, central volume, where we make the injection, we make our drugs. We have the second compartment that is volume two, that belongs to the organ with the eye erosion, like liver, uh, brain, heart, and so on. And then we have the third compartment that is volume free, that is fat, and all the organ that have no a good, error, a, a very high flow erosion. And you can see also that uh, this free compartment communicated each other. And uh, uh, this communication is uh, regulated by a mathematical constant uh, that is a clearance, a clearance two, clearance three, clearance one. Which is clearance one? Is the elimination of the drug. The clearance, uh, it's really important because uh, uh, make the characteristic of the drug that are uh, using. There are some drugs that have a very slowly elimination, and you know very well. And because the clearance, the passage of the drug from volume three to volume one is very, very slow. But we have also another compartment but uh, usually we uh, don't measure that is via FX side. And for this, we say is a negligible volume, that is the brain. Uh, I would like to remember, I uh, wrote the only work in the world in an important review about how to measure the concentration of the drug in this negligible volume. I mean, we measure the uh, concentration of the drug in extracellular fluid of a cerebral uh, um, cell. Uh, we insert a probe in the brain, uh, in, of course, in uh, patients with uh, uh, some problem, okay, but not in the tumor, but in the, what we call the uh, green area, and uh, we understand if uh, the concentration that uh, is uh, just, uh, we can say in the effect side, is the same of uh, the concentration that uh, is programmed, or we want to have. It's not in this way. The brain remains still a very difficult uh, organ to understand. Ah, one moment. What is the KO? 
the KO is a mathematical constant that measure the velocity in which the drug from the first compartment, that is the central compartment, go to the effect site. <clears throat> uh, just a second, I think that the Dr. Puri will come back to this. Uh, if we make an injection of the drug, this is our uh, linear of the concentration because we have a, a very quick increase of drug concentration in the blood and after a rapid decrease. If we measure the drug in the after some minutes in the second compartment, we see that the increase of the drug is lower and less and also the decrease of the concentration, it will be uh, longer. This is the, uh, how the concentration of the drugs change in the third compartment, I mean in the fat. And every you, of you remember that in the fat, we need more time to decrease the concentration of the drug and we can have also rebound effect. So from this, we built a pharmacokinetics model uh, with this mathematical constant and we put in a computer. And I think that Dr. Puri will talk about this. We can work directly to effect site concentration, not to, to plasma concentration, just to avoid too many variability and to have a, a sure effect directly on the brain. And so we can sign in red the plasma concentration and in green the uh, effect site concentration. What is a pharmacokinetic model? The aim of the model is to establish, first of all, the volume sites of the compartments, that are the ideal compartments. The K drug change rate of compartments, including the FX site. The clearances is to achieve by comparing the variable of each patient's weight, height, sex, and age. Another very important thing is to remember when we make anesthesia is the time to pick a fat. What means we have two main characteristics to define it. The time needed to reach the maximum concentration that is called time to pick a fat. The maximum concentration reached. Here is a just an example in our uh, simulation center, you can see that uh, if we use remifentanil, we can have a, a rapid increase of the concentration in the blood and a, a very quick decrease in the same compartment. This, uh, and when this line meet the other line, the green line that the measure the concentration in the brain, this is the concentration peak that for Remy Fental, we know is very short, two nanogram per milliliter. And is depending on administered dosage, speed of infusion, drugs KO. For example, you know that now the most modern syringe ever, you can vary the velocity of infusion just to, to adjust this kind of aspect. The second aspect is the time to pick effect. You see this interval is very short. It's only one minute and 21 seconds, depending on the drug scale. So the effect site concentration peak depends 
on dosage of the administered drugs, speed of drug infusion, the KO of the drugs of T alpha, of a KO, extremely rapid for remifentanil swans, volume of the central compartment. Of course, smaller is the central compartment and more higher it will be the concentration of the drug. Here, just two very used drugs. And then we can see the difference of the time to pick effects of this opioid. Remifentanil is the quickest, one minutes and 26 seconds. The second one is alfentanil, two minutes and 34 seconds. The, the third one is fentanyl, which takes three minutes and 31 seconds to reach the concentration in the brain. And so fentanyl is the slowest one, six minutes. That means this. <coughs> if you want to start your anesthesia using one of these opioids, and on the other side, you are using the hypnotic that usually is a, a, a Diprivana, okay? You must compare the time of propofol, that is around four minutes, with this. Otherwise, if you have the patients with no pain or the patient that still feel, listen, the pain of intubation. <coughs> and at the other end, you have a patient that doesn't sleep or sleep before the necessary. So compare, please, the time to pick effect of Diprivan with all these uh, opioids and, and you can have a very good uh, introduction to the anesthesia, a very good starter. I think that my time is over. I, uh, this is the last call. No, uh, my time is over. My secretary say, time so uh, thank you for uh, listening to me uh, and uh, i hope to have other occasion to go inside the, to this problem okay Thank you, Professor Kirino. No, we'll it's okay. The next uh, talk, we'll have the question answers at the end. Over to you, Nishan. Nishan, Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, thank you, sir, for the wonderful lecture. And uh, for the next uh, session, <clears throat> yes. For the next session, may I invite uh, our uh, esteemed uh, uh, national faculty, Dr. Tushar, sir. Uh, Dr. Tushar uh, Choksi, sir, uh, is a well known uh, faculty when it comes to uh, TIVA, and he has also. Uh, am I visible, sir? Is it visible? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. All good. So uh, he has delivered a lecture uh, before at the ICA online classes also. He's a visiting faculty at uh, Parol and Savita Medical Colleges, the Eurocare Hospital, Bunny NT Hospital, Sterling Hospital, and uh, is the founder of TIVA and OFA Facebook groups in India with the international, national, and state level uh, speakers. He started the smartphone and tele anesthesia practice in India and started the first uh, infographics in anesthesia. So he's very well known for infographics in anesthesia. He's a vast experience of more than 32 years uh, and a special interest in uh, TIVA, OFA, NORA, Euroanesthesia, Laproanesthesia, ENT, Pediatric, and he's also a pain specialist. And he has more than 200 uh, lectures, more than 150 conference lectures. And uh, currently a uh, consultant uh, practicing Anesthesiologist at Bara in Gujarat. 
so a very warm welcome sir and uh, he has that national origami pa paper crafting teacher also and visual storyteller and vlogger that that we have uh, seen quite a lot of times uh, choksi sir is very active that ways uh, the other uh, esteemed the faculty that we have is dr nishant kumar uh, he is an a uh, professor at the lady harding medical college and associated hospitals in new delhi uh, he is the associate editor of the indian journal of anesthesia the editor of isa delhi 2122 and we have uh, very good uh, newsletters coming from there he won the best reviewer award of ij 2018 more than 45 publications in peer reviewed national and international journals He is the editor and pre peer reviewer for international journals, part of the working group of international consensus on green anesthesia. And his areas of interest are TIVA, low flow anesthesia, uh, critical care research methodology, and acute pain. And in, even in our ISA lecture, uh, he had presented his views on TIVA the last time we had it here. So over to you, gentlemen. Could you please introduce the speaker, next speaker for us? Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nishant. and today i am very lucky i have a very pride and privilege to introduce my e teacher on this happy teachers day so good evening friends teachers and my colleagues today the second talk is by dr thomas hammerling he is a professor of anesthesiology in mcgill university montreal canada and he is also a biomedical engineer and uh, i called him as a robotic anesthesiologist because you know when i say when i am uh, giving lecture for tiva or artificial intelligence you know i always put his slide with his photographs he has done so many inventions about 256 articles and even book chapters of five i had seen through the internet uh, he has got a 4000 citation and his articles are read by more than 27000 anesthesiologists all over the world he is the first person in the world to start a max lepi completed automatic anesthesia delivery system He is the first uh, gave the trans transcontinental anesthesia. Transcontinental anesthesia means he has given anesthesia from the Montreal, Canada to Italy. He was sitting on the Montreal OT and he has given anesthesia to the Italy OT. So he has developed the first robotic surgery, robotic anesthesia system. He has even intubated first time with the robotic intubations uh, with capless intubation system. even not only that he has invented the maglen robot to give the 100% block on the uh, uh, now blocks so he is a senior editor in the nscs analgesis technology simulation and computing and uh, what not uh, i am very lucky to introduce him so i will invite dr thomas hemmerling to give his uh, insight over the uh, this uh, topic of muscle relaxation revisited for 2022 and uh, best practice thank you thank you very much for the kind introduction i have pre recorded my my um, presentation to stay within the time limit just let me share my screen and hopefully all goes well okay. i'll show you a probably a boring slide about basic pharmacology of muscle relaxant we will talk about neuromuscular monitoring i have one slide on new neuromuscular blocking agents we will talk about its use in critical care and i will above all present some case studies and finish up with recommendations which i think recommend the best practice i think this is not a new table for most of you the three most used Most relaxants are still succinylcholin, rocuronium, and cisatacorium. I know that many people use fecronium, which is perfectly fine. Um, pancronium, I'm not quite sure how frequent that still is. Atacorium is still in use, um, but if I had the choice between cisatacorium and atacorium, I probably would go for cisatacorium anyway. I think mivacorium is no longer marketed. My favorite most relaxant is rocuronium. I feel it has the perfect combination of a very short onset time when you dose it correctly, anything between 60 and 90 seconds for intubation. It can even be used for rapid sequence induction. The clinical duration is anything between 20 and 30 minutes, which for most surgeries where I practice at this point, it's more like an ambulatory setup is pretty perfect. And it uh, can easily be traversed. with sugamatics 
We will talk about Sugavanex a little bit later. Another favorite of mine is Cisatacorium, and I want to take an extra slide on this. If you can get Cisatacorium, especially during the pandemic, it's actually quite an ideal um, muscle relaxant if you use it right. The intubation dose is anything between 0.1 and 0.2 milligram per kilogram. You can accelerate the onset by using 10% of the intubation dose as a priming. You should then get a deep muscle relaxation within 90 seconds with a duration of action of about 30 to 40 minutes. Why I have become renewed a friend of Cisatacurium is because we are confronted with a different kind of patients in these uh, days. Patients who have renal dysfunction, patients who have hepatic dysfunction, patients who need continuous intubation, either due COVID or ARDS. So we have used this at Acurium whenever it was available heavily in critical care medicine. In comparison to Atracurium, there's no histamine liberation. And obviously, as you know, the medication gets eliminated using Hoffman elimination, independent of renal or hepatic impairment. Quantitative monitoring has always been a favorite of mine. I've developed one or two methods myself, but I still feel awkward seeing my colleagues using qualitative monitoring, putting in a stimulator on the ulnar nerve and stimulating the ulnar nerve and looking at the twitch of the hand or the thumb or putting the hand on it and counting. This, I think, should no longer be the standard of care. The standard of care should be quantitative monitoring where you actually give, get a, an objective value. And if you do that, then you can separate deep, moderate, and shallow blocks. The shallow block more in the old days, we called it surgical relaxation with a top ratio of 25%. With the advances in surgery, this might no longer be valid because obviously laparoscopic surgery um, necessitated very often a higher degree of um, muscle relaxation. And obviously as well, a tough ratio of more than 0.9 as an adequate recovery. These are devices, some of the devices available. Um, I, by sheer accident, I looked into the India Mart and I found several, several um, uh, devices. Uh, we use the kinemiography, which is on the left side. There's an equivalent um, uh, device for the Draga machines, and there's obviously the good old TOF watch as an axial myography uh, device. So there are lots of quantitative monitoring out there. So please use it. I will show you how. There's not much to say about new neuromuscular blocking agents uh, since 1997. There's nothing much coming out. Uh, most people were very excited about Cantacurium until we found that, that with higher doses of ED95, there's quite a significant histamine release um, and uh, transient, transient uh, cardiovascular side effects. Um, and that has basically stopped a little bit any kind of FDA approval. What, however, is interesting in these chlorofumal rates is that they can be adducted uh, using L-cysteine within one to two minutes. So similar to Sugamadex, these compounds uh, can be eliminated very, very quickly. And it could well be that some of these compounds in the near future uh, will make it to the market, um, mainly because their profile sim is very similar to succinylcholine. And the big advantage is in its elimination uh, uh, building compounds with L-cysteine, similar to the Sugamadex brocoronium. Uh, compound. I'm sure neuromuscular blockade was a major issue in India during the COVID-19 pandemic, and the pandemic is obviously ongoing. And it's always the question, what kind of neuromuscular blockade do you use for a rapid sequence intubations in uh, COVID-19 patients? Now, I have to tell you that in the emergency room in Canada is uh, equipped with uh, general physicians, anesthesia is usually not involved, and they usually intubate all patients using rogaronium and video langoscopy. They don't feel comfortable with um, uh, When the pandemic started in 2020, we took over because um, these patients were very difficult to intubate. They were, uh, the margin of error was very limited, 
and uh, there uh, was a rapid desaturation if you fail to intubate very quickly. Uh, most of my colleagues chose succin and choline to intubate them. Others used rocuronium, but always in the package with sugamadex because we have a uh, population around our hospital here with very difficult airways, so to speak. Um, and uh, uh, so we, we made sure that the sugamadex was always there as a, a backup. Uh, as long as it was available, since that occurred, was our standard mass relaxant in the ICU for ventilated patients. And um, unfortunately, uh, there was a shortage at a certain point, so we had to go back to um, uh, rocuronium and at a certain point, even pancuronium. The question has always been, do you do continuous versus an intermittent muscle relaxation in critical care? Personally, I would sort of like sign uh, this algorithm, which is uh, pretty recent. Whenever the ARDS and difficult ventilation uh, scenario is manageable, and we're talking about a mild ARDS, I believe that there's no need for um, a muscle relaxant infusion. Um, this can be done on demand. However, I'm, I'm well aware of the fact that when you have a moderate or severe ARDS, you might have to uh, uh, do a continuous infusion of muscle relaxant, ideally OPC NIMAX, but even there, you should not do it for more than uh, 48 uh, hours. So be careful uh, with a continuous neuromuscular blockade in critical. And qu the, the, the standard question is always the same. Does actually muscle relaxation improve surgical outcome? And this, here is just a, a, an overview of some studies, obviously most done in laparoscopic surgery. And as you can see, it's not that clear cut. These are studies which uh, com uh, compared a deep uh, neuromuscular blockade versus moderate or no uh, blockade. And you can see, it, 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 in general, the surgeons, when blinded, don't actually know whether the uh, neuromuscular block is complete or not. My general um, recommendation to my residents is if you have a very slow and young surgeon, try to make him comfortable and uh, create a significant neuromuscular block. Uh, but if it's a fast surgeon, and um, depending on as well the type of surgery, I think an on-demand muscle relaxation is uh, more than enough. So how do you actually should use um, neuromuscular blocks? And, and this is really my practice I'm, I'm showing here. And that's why I, I've done it with TCI, Propofol, and BIS, which I use on all my patients. But you can replace it with uh, anything you, you want. When I do the clinical sign monitoring, sort of vital sign monitoring, I, in addition, as all my colleagues actually in the hospital, do quantitative monitoring at the AP uh, as well. It's probably installed. It's probably installed that it doesn't uh, move throughout surgery. We then put this monitor on, we induce anesthesia, and once the patient is asleep, we start mask ventilation. When the mask ventilation is successful and feasible, then we inject muscle relaxant, in this case, for coronary, but we intubate when the trough ratio then is zero. That gives you the maximum um, information out of the quantitative monitoring. The maintenance is always on demand. It's always according to surgical needs. It's always at the lowest level throughout surgery, and it's titrated according to the trough ratio. Um, use of neuromuscular block um, is always done in a way as if you did not have um, a reversal drug available. So ideally, in the, in the classical scenario, your patient should recuperate, or the muscle relaxation or the muscle function of your patient should recuperate at the end of surgery without the need of. Um, so the tough ratio is calculated at the adductor pulses at the end of surgery. If it's below 0.9, we do a reversal with neostigmin. Uh, if the tough ratio is above 0.25, if the tough ratio is below two twitches, we wait. Uh, we continue to monitor the top ratio after the reversal. So I want to see an effect. So I want to see that my reversal uh, basically causes the top ratio to go back to 0.9 and higher. New stigmin is given in a, in a single shot dose. Um, I like to remind you that the onset of action is about a minute. The peak effect is at 10 minutes and the duration is uh, about 30 minutes. Sometimes in rare cases, you need to give a second dose, but that really depends. Some case studies here. This is a 20 year old young patient. So you scheduled for breast reduction surgery, ASA1 surgery about two hours. We use an LMA in these patients with positive pressure ventilation. We insert the LMA with a small dose of muscle relaxation. 
and then continue TCI propofol. We do on-demand relaxation. Now, to give you an idea what actually on-demand relaxation means, when the electrocorderoid is used on the pectoralis muscle and the patient is not relaxed, there are muscle twitches which disturb the surgical activities. So we then give a little bit of muscle relaxation at the end of surgery of two hours, because this was on-demand relaxation, the TOF ratio was 100%, no reversal was given. The next one is a case where I was asked in and uh, uh, to evaluate the patient in the PACU. Um, 80 year old, very frail, ASA3, the classical humerus fracture patient, 40 kilograms, renal failure, hepatic impairment. And um, the colleague had given 50 milligrams for coronal induction, 20 minutes after it's another 50, surgery took about three hours. Then uh, the patient was reversed, but there was no monitoring done. The patient was extubated. Breathing was very shallow in the PACU. Hemodynamically, the patient was okay, but didn't react at all to verbal comments, despite the pupils um, being pinpointed. So I thought, well, is there a post-operative um, residual growth? So I give uh, Sugamadex, and two minutes afterwards, the patient is wide awake, reacts to commands, and breathes normally. So this is a case of residual neuromuscular block after high dose rocconium and reversal without checking the effect of the reversal. This is a slide it's from 2010, but it still shows that post-operative residual carrierization is a major problem in anesthesia and still is these days. So my recommendations, do use quantitative monitoring as much as standard as ECG monitoring. My favorite muscle relaxants are rocconium cisartigurum, Cisartigum has the advantage of this chemical elimination independent of organ function. When I do rapid sequence induction of COVID patients, I either use succinylcholine or rocuronium with a backup. Please keep in mind that some of these patients are difficult to intubate, even with a video laryngoscope. So if you intubate with a very high dose of rocuronium, you might run into trouble. Neostigmine is still a standard choice for reversal. When an LMA is used with positive pressure ventilation, I usually use a low dose neuromuscular block to insert my LMA and to maintain positive pressure ventilation. So my key message here, please do not forget quantitative monitoring. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Hemerling, for your uh, ideas. And it was definitely informative. Unfortunately, uh, in India, most of the places we don't have uh, neuromuscular monitoring as yet, even at uh, good centers. But yes, that has been the recommendation. And uh, uh, we do rely on a lot of uh, clinical and hemodynamic science before we actually excavate. So, but yes, definitely the monitoring should be there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tushar sir. Any words, sir? Uh, uh, I am very lucky to hear this uh, uh, this lecture, and uh, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. We are all very lucky. All the uh, questions and the queries at the end of all the sessions. So, uh, with your permission, uh, we can move uh, forward, sir. It works. Yeah. So, the next session uh, uh, by Dr. GT Puri, sir. And uh, for this session, we'll have uh, respected uh, Dr. Amitabh Dutta, sir, and Dr. Arun Biji from Bangalore as uh, chairpersons. Uh, Dr. Amita uh, Datta sir, MD from PGI Chandigarh and a long-term trainee at the ICMR, NIH and Bioethics of the Fogarty Medical Center, Bethesda in USA. He is currently the Senior Consultant Professor of Anesthesiology at the Sir Gangaram Hospital, uh, New Delhi. He is also the Member Secretary of the Ethics Committee, a member of the Science Protocol Committee of uh, Sir Gangaram Hospital and the Chairman of the Ethics Committee of the Fortis Hospital at Vasant Kunj. He has uh, areas of interest in uh, general anesthesia, selective spinal anesthesia, philosophy and clinical uh, and research ethics in uh, anesthesia, and uh, public health anesthesiology and anesthesia healthcare systems. So, a very warm welcome.
using TY and TCI, nerve blocks, low flow anesthesia. He likes postgraduate teaching and patient safety. And he has been the reviewer of Orphan Anesthesia Journal for the German Society of Anesthesia also, and a speaker at the various national and uh, state conferences. So uh, welcome, Dr. Arun, and uh, we request one of you to introduce the next speaker. Uh, Dr. Arun, you may please go ahead. As you all know, Dr. Govardhan Puri is a well-known teacher in India. He is cardiac anesthetist and intensivist. He is former dean of PGI Chandigarh, the Great Institute of India. He was former chairman of Advanced Cardiac Center of PGI. He was the founder of North India's first biomedical instrumentation and devices hub, which is a center for clinical validation and testing. He is the inventor of CLADS, which is world's first closed loop anesthesia delivery system. He is also the inventor of closed loop arterial blood pressure control system, which is CLADS. He is the editor in chief of Journal of Perioperative Echo. He is a scholar of BJA in 1989 only. He is P. N. Berry scholar also in 1993. His various interests are pharmacokinetic modeling, ventilation, biomedical instrumentation, automation in anesthesia and intensive care. Many of us here are his students also. It's a great honor to introduce Dr. Puri. Thank you, sir. Yes, I will just need to get it in the full screen mode, sir, on the right side. Yes. Uh, am, I, am I visible? Uh, the slides are not in the full screen mode yet, sir. Okay, let me. I'm just stop sharing and again I'll start sharing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, is it all right? Yes, it is perfect, sir. Uh, you are uh, visible and you are audible also. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Sorry for the delay in the start. I'm sure I will try my best to finish in the next 15 minutes because otherwise you are going for your evening tea or the dinner. Well, my topic of the today, I first thank uh, Dr. Kareno and Dr. Hammerling to be uh, to uh, join this uh, webinar and Dr. Naveen and Dr. Uh, the president of IS Venkat Giri to allow us to be, uh, 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 be uh, taking up this webinar on the, 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 the India Teachers Day, which is celebrated as uh, uh, the, 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 uh, in memory of our the ex uh, pres president of India, uh, Sarupali Radha Krishnanji, who was a teacher par excellence. Uh, greetings from the city beautiful Chandigarh. My disclosures are that I hold patents for CLADS and, uh, and the IV alert and collaborating with the Clarity Medical System for uh, product development. As you know, why we just to justify, why do we need automation anesthesia? Dr. Hammerling has stressed upon, and I'm sure the so much work which is going on, there's a reason to uh, go for automation anesthesia. It's a complex uh, 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 situation where the surgery and anesthesia which interrupt hemostatic mechanisms and altering the human physiology much more in those patients who have multiple comorbidity. 
And when the patient is connected to the complex anesthesia machines and all, there's this complex situation. And it's more so when the today's anesthetist is doing so many other works while giving anesthesia, there's a reason that if some of these works can be automated and uh, uh, feedback guided automatic drug delivery systems are some of these things which can be uh, uh, in, introduced into the clinical practice and which will uh, decrease the burden of the anesthetist and ultimately it will lead on to the minimizing the human errors which form more than 80% of the anesthetic incident as per the, uh, the state Institute uh, monitoring report uh, two decades ago, but I'm sure this holds true as, the, as our anesthesia becomes more and more complex and uh, the, 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 these such incidences can become a major issue, especially of the normal working hours where the person anesthesia is not only burdened, but the, brain, the, the whole activities are not working uh, 100%. So some of the tasks which can be, uh, uh, which are repetitive, uh, boarding, uh, and uh, which can uh, be easily uh, uh, automated are the drugs administrations and uh, pre anesthetic checkups. And as Dr. Hammerling has uh, proved that endotracheal intubation also is feasible to be uh, automated. Fluid administration, blood administrations, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, the, the normal caregiver anesthesia, where based on the monitoring devices, he or she alters the actuating devices to alter the, uh, the anesthetic drugs or maybe any, any other uh, system. Uh, if this feedback from the monitoring devices can be automated and which works suitably, untiring, 24 hours a day, a reliable quantitative objective feedback is available, that's a closed loop system which can be incorporated into day-to-day -day anesthesia practice. And it is being done in other fields of uh, 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 medical fields like the simple pacemaker. So in anesthesia, there are lots of things which can be, which are also already being uh, put into practice like ventilation control, hypnotic control, nociceptic control, neuromuscular control, so and hemodynamic control. So the closed loop uh, uh, systems can be applied here. And it's not it, that uh, it's only in the last two decades this uh, automation has started. It's Way back in uh, the middle of the last century, when uh, the big four uh, reported uh, this, only issue is that over the period, our feedback uh, systems have become more accurate. The feedback, the monitorings have become more objective. And uh, there are a lot of uh, groups which are active all around the, uh, uh, the world. I may be missing uh, some of the names, uh, but uh, I want to remember uh, Gavin Kenny who's a Glasgow group uh, way back in 90s, who started uh, uh, this, uh, but uh, uh, ultimately they, uh, the finished once the TCI was popularized. But uh, we at India, we started in the early phase of 2001, 2002, and uh, then Louis et al. was doing great work, and obviously the hammerling, they started the Max Leapy way back in 2007. And it's all because of the the more objective, more better understanding of the different components of anesthesia and the more objective monitoring of these various components that the predetermined dosage administrations, as Dr. Kirino uh, uh, has explained, that there is variability of pharmacokinetics as well as pharmacodynamics. So the predetermined dosages of MAC or CP50 with further titration of blood based on the blood pressure, heart rate or movement of the patient may not be the best way to practice uh, art of anesthesia scientifically. And uh, as obvious from this bell-shaped graph, what the MAC and CP50 depict is only a middle part of this bell curve. Most of the things which are, well, the most of the people who are either uh, uh, on this side of the curve or this side of the curve, they will be requiring, either, they, they will be given with this uh, method more or less of an aesthetic agent. So uh, with the development of uh, e e e process EEG uh, parameters like bispectral index, entropy, and so on and so forth, uh, the implementation of the closed loop hypnotic control became possible, more uh, uh, feasible. 
And uh, what we did in close in 2002 was interfacing the syringe pumps with the BIS monitor and the vital sign monitor and putting an algorithm which was, uh, though looks a little uh, complicated in this graph, was very simple, just collecting for every five seconds the BIS data and the vital sign parameters and trying to up, upscale or downscale uh, uh, the, the, uh, the administration of the IV, uh, the propofol, uh, uh, depending on the trends of the BIS. And then we added the end adult anesthetic concentration into this algorithm and uh, with, with, the, with which we could control both BIS and adults uh, concentration and we could uh, devise a system which can con completely uh, control in hypnotic agents, whether isoflurane or uh, uh, propofol and any time can shift from one to other. Our first uh, work on uh, closed loop anesthesia delivery system in uh, cardiac surgery patients were presented in Paris World Congress and way back in 2004. And subsequent to that, we the, 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 the first uh, uh, publication in anesthesia intensive care in 2007, based on the data of ASA 12 patients undergoing uh, elective general surgery, where we showed that uh, the closed loop anesthesia delivery is not only uh, feasible, it is effective, and is uh, not only as efficient as compared to manual control, but as per the standard way of analyzing any target control uh, uh, infusion, whether it is targeted to this or, or to a concentration based on the, uh, the performance error, what we found was that uh, the, it, re it reduces the induction doses, it uh, 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 decreases the, uh, uh, the variability around the target, it most of the times the efficiency of the uh, control, the bispectral index was better using uh, automated control using CLADS. So, and this is more precise control of target base with less inter and intra individual uh, variability and lesser overshoot of bispectral index. As further, it was uh, uh, shown effective on the similar trends in the, uh, in the, in the open heart surgery patients. And subsequently, we showed it in the feasibility of this in the pediatric cardiac surgery patients uh, uh, more than 10 years ago. And again, the, 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 the lesser dosage of propofol and uh, more uh, hemodynamic stability were some of the things which came out of those uh, studies. We could put up this system at a high altitude to not only demonstrate this feasibility there, but also could find the uh, 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 the, the decrease, sorry, the increased uh, anesthetic requirement in those uh, high altitude, uh, uh, high landers uh, in Leh Ladakh at the height of uh, more than three and a half kilometers above the sea level. Uh, uh, so, <clears throat> uh, bispectral index controlled post op sedation was also feasible. We could show in the post op cardiac surgery patients and uh, in comparison to the target control infusions uh, systems, we found the closed loop anesthesia delivery system was better, uh, both in the term of performance as well as in the term of hemodynamic stability. So it's not only reducing the aesthetic dosage, drug doses and reduces the burden of work on anesthesiologists, and, but the issue is commercial availability of uh, these closed loop systems. As I said earlier, introduction of the uh, liquid isoflurane into the expiratory limb of the circle absorber, we could control the anesthetic agents even using uh, uh, inhalation anesthetic agents. And we showed uh, in cardiac surgery patients it, uh, that it's not only feasible, but it's also economical as well as, as, well as stable uh, anesthesia. And Dr. Hammerling has already proved that how you can control anesthesia from a remote location, and we could do the same here in India from, uh, from Chandigarh to Leh Ladakh. CLADS is an, uh, not only a, a clinical method, a clinical tool, but it's a scientific, it's a, a, a scientific tool to compare unbiased way the control of anesthetic delivery and dosages and allows the data analysis. And uh, this has been shown by 
uh, the work uh, from Gangaram Hospital by uh, the team of Dr. Amitabh Datta while evaluating the uh, dexamethasone effect on the, uh, uh, the propofol requirement. And uh, similarly, they have used uh, these clads in uh, uh, thoracic surgery as well as in bariatric surgery. And uh, just to uh, give a background of how we reached that uh, the present day closed loop in the CR delivery system was our earlier studies, as Dr. Crane was mentioning about pharmacokinetic modeling of Indian patients based on which both single bolus dose of propofol and plasma concentration analysis and uh, relation, finding the relation of the plasma concentrations to the bispectral index and entropy, and then uh, putting those things in the algorithm to control the anesthesia using clads. And as I said, uh, for the isoflurin, we, uh, we did studies way back 15, 20 years ago to see the uptake of isoflurin in the various uh, groups of uh, individuals and uh, using the data to form our algorithm for isoclads. And then we had done this multicentric evaluation of this closed loop anesthesia delivery system like any other uh, group which has been working on this uh, uh, closed loop systems. And what we found that the performance of the system was uniform at different centers as when we use the clads, while the performance of manual control was variable. And the major advantage of the decreasing the uh, propofol requirement, though uh, at a slightly longer induction time, but with a lesser bis, bis overshoot at the time of induction. And again, the percentage of time the bis remains within the target was significantly higher, 82% times vis-a-vis -vis the 60% times in the manual group. And this is uh, uh, visible from these two time series graphs of bispectral index over different times, where the clads group had a more narrower control than the manual uh, group. So, as I said earlier, this uh, the, the 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 variation in the manual groups were uh, uh, quite a lot from the different different centers, but the clads uh, variations was minimal across the different centers. Similarly, I have, we have used this in the heart, in the most complicated heart transplant recipient uh, patients who had cardiomyopathy, ejection fraction of 10 to 15 percent, undergoing uh, uh, anesthesia, both for induction of, with propofol as well as maintenance with propofol. And we, what we showed that not only uh, the, the, the stability was uh, maintained in these, the, the hemodynamics were maintained. And whenever there was a drop in the blood pressure, the propofol delivery was, as shown in the graph, was stopped by the, uh, the, the uh, system automatically. And uh, similarly, post-bypass is stable, uh, uh, the bispectral index control. We just evaluated our st uh, studies as compared to the other studies which have been going simultaneously. What we found in the beginning was that uh, the, the most of the studies done with the closed loop systems required initial uh, uh, effect set concentration setting by the uh, manually by the anesthesiologist, while our system uh, used uh, this from the beginning for controlling induction of anesthesia as well as uh, maintenance of anesthesia. That's uh, uh, the, the, uh, the very uh, famous uh, dashboard of Dr. Hammerling's Max Sleepy, uh, which tells a lot of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, about induction, the uh, the, the neuromuscular blockade, analog, uh, and, and low score. And this is what our system looks like with the syringe pumps and the monitors and everything in, uh, incorporated into the uh, uh, vit uh, vital sign monitor as a control system. Uh, similarly, the closed loop muscle relaxation control systems are also available. I'm just skipping them. The analgesia monitoring is, the, is one thing which is uh, uh, challenging to the uh, researchers in the closed loop systems uh, and different people have been using different uh, uh, feedback mechanisms, uh, hemodynamic responses, skin impedance, pupillary diameter to control, to assess analgesia and to control analgesia. Lots of uh, equipment is being uh, used commercially and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, hopefully in the future we'll have a uh, very stable system, reliable system in a practical way. Uh, hemodynamic control 
uh, using closed list systems are also possible and uh, is shown in a number of studies. And what we did in our set, uh, setup is we incorporated the, the hemodynamic control also into the uh, closed loop anesthesia delivery system. And what we have shown is that the hemodynamic stability using closed loop anesthesia, uh, uh, closed loop art arterial blood pressure control system, where the different vasoactive agents uh, are controlled with the feedback of uh, blood pressure, uh, 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 variability of the, uh, the, the, uh, the pulse uh, volume, et cetera, has been shown to uh, be not only feasible, but also producing more uh, better hemodynamic stability as compared to the uh, uh, manual controls. And the applicability of these system is quite a uh, lot like spinal anesthesia, uh, uh, hypertensive emergencies, postcardiac surgery patients. Let's see what uh, we're able to do in the future. The future direction is total closed loop anesthesia, hemodynamic control, fluid administration, and the AI and machine learning application. Commercialization remains a big issue because of regulatory uh, things. And uh, in, uh, 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 in uh, 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 the, the benefits, I've already ex uh, ex uh, explained that, uh, uh, that, that it's not only that uh, it fine tunes the drug delivery, the closed loop systems, any, any closed loop system, whether uh, the CLADS or MaxLeap or any uh, the, the dual control of uh, uh, Dr. Louis from uh, France. It allows uh, safety of the patients, the anesthetists, expert anesthet anesthetics uh, delivery around the clock uh, without any get the, without the machine getting tired like anesthetists. And it's always a, a second uh, opinion available even if the patient person is uh, 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 using a manual control or taking, it can always go from the uh, uh, automatic to manual depending on what you want. And uh, uh, it maintains anesthesia uh, sleep in a correct depth all the time, and it's versatile, and uh, and just just shows that when you are sleeping, you didn't uh, when the anesthetist is sleeping or tired, the patient's uh, uh, the, the life is not put to risk as uh, the, the people sitting in the boat are confused what's happening. I clipped this photograph while sitting in front. So the, the person's eyes were closed when he was uh, driving the boat. Uh, so uh, this is my uh, group at PGI Chandigarh and at different centers across the world and uh, in India. And I thank you uh, all of them for uh, uh, working together uh, to achieve this uh, goal. Thank you very much again, Dr. Naveen. And thank you, Dr. Hammerling and uh, uh, Dr. Kurino. Thank you, sir. May I? Yes, Amitabh. Uh, am I audible? Amitabh, sir? Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Um, uh, may, I, may I comment something? Uh, Absolutely, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I listen to all the lectures very closely and carefully. And I wonder that uh, we are moving into anesthesia future with automation platform. And whenever we talk of automation, the one of the caveat of the automation is because we have to look both the ways. It is evidence, evidence everywhere, no evidence to apply. That means to say, for the last 25 years, there is a lot of publication, a lot of scientific work, a work, lot of good work is there on automation of anesthesia, different aspects, muscle relaxation, anesthesia delivery, this and that. But till date, we have not, we have not been able to take it to our OR operating rooms. What is not with curious eye rather than only, uh, I mean, appreciating what is being done and what is already being done. 
my view is whenever we talk of automation there is a do two issues one is internal validity that is internal validity of automated systems and the external validity that is uh, how it fares on the patients and patient safety efficiency and how it fares on the anesthesiologist and that too uh, that is called ergonomics but uh, i am afraid i have worked with clads uh, system and done research with sir uh, since last 10 or 12 years and i can see that verbal criteria settles the internal validity issue but for external validity uh, there is a lot of work to be done i believe the clad system monitors general anesthesia depth it titrates general anesthesia depth it controls general anesthesia depth but where is the grounding by grounding i mean we have a long way to go until we do this and then there there are conflict of interest and there are a lot of regulatory hurdles so uh, i believe with uh, this maiden webinar between siva and isa we start looking into this for more adoption into routine clinical practice otherwise uh, i believe things are not moving that rosy on clinical uh, adoption front um, ad uh, having said all this but i am uh, pleased with the way automated systems have developed especially dr puri has been working on uh, it for last 25 years i have been his student he was my guide mentor and everything and uh, uh, there is a lot to be done and probably the uh, current experts and future experts would take it forward to the external validity settlement also thank you so much Well, thank you amta for your uh, uh, valuable comments and uh, yes you are right that we should think prospectively whatever as you gain we will definitely go further and i also welcome uh, our respected teacher professor tej ke paul sir and uh, uh, mr nishant if you can take the uh, uh, questions in the chat box please can i respond yes, to dr uh, 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 dr datta's comments no oh, sir please please go ahead sir yeah it's an excellent thing dr datta we knew the helmets are going to save patients uh, save the individuals are we still using helmets yeah yeah we know that seat belts can save lives are we still using this uh, uh, the, the, the 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 seat belts no see it's a slow process it's a slow process and you need to as you uh, rightly said you are validating with standard criteria we are still to validate with the user end user and you know very well when you are using these systems in the clinical practice you need some objective anesthetic depth monitoring which cost in india at least 1000 or more than 1000 rupees and that's the an average anesthesia person gets only 2.5000 per anesthesia case maybe 3000 or 5000 in delhi but average otherwise if you are going to add this and the uh, cost and then the reliability of those eeg indices the machine cost and all that's the reason the amount of time 5 six minutes extra spent to put this monitors that's the reason it's going to take time till these things are sorted out but yes they are going to stay the for the future i think i don't know what dr hammerling is going to say about this but this is my you have seen heard yesterday one top ceo of the company died because probably he was not wearing the seat belt sir can i say something yes sir yeah since last 35 years i am seeing that the people in 90s switching over from pantothal to propofol it has taken almost 10 years in india and outside india so like invention is a continuous process it will have a impact on the future scenario but if you see last 10 years then everything whatever what, whatever the inventions are going in all over world now it is accepted within 5 10 years 
so now metaverse is also coming in the picture artificial intelligence is also coming in the picture so whatever the western side inventions are there that comes in india immediately so i am very fortunate and uh, i am very optimistic that ke everything will be available to all the anesthesiologists across the world and dr hammerling i see that ke what he has done in this robotic anesthesia and uh, works in his uh, tenor excellent i must congratulate him thank you i would like uh, just to say some few words in my experience around the world the progress uh, is always slow uh, in india you have an area of uh, excellence uh, clinical excellence and a lot of uh, other area to uh, increase in quality and in safety this is a big problem everywhere also in my country don't think that uh, tiva tci is uh, in every country uh, or every hospital will accept. First of all, we have the surgeon, that is another uh, problem, because the surgeon say, oh, Tiva TCI, we lose a lot of time for intubation, for preparing the patient, that is not true, but uh, is, uh, is uh, just to simplify some problem. Secondly, the, uh, Puri talk about the uh, devices. I agree. But I would like to remember that the, when we have bought the first telephone, was very simple. One, two, three, just to make the number where we want to call. Now, every phone we have can do fax, photo, video, and so on. That means that the progress and the, the, the telephone company, they have a, a a lot of psychological team to understand which is important to modify that must be accepted by, by the clients. So when I will bought in my hospital some new device, I always try to bought something, to buy something that is not totally new because otherwise all my team uh, uh, strike <laughs> because they start to say why is it so complicated so i try to have a very small upgrade a very small uh, increase in quality and safety and this is a really important ability because you need to adapt your uh, collaborator to the new situation uh, I remember when uh, uh, I was young, not now, <laughs> and someone moved me from a OA to another OA. For the first day, I was terrified. I walked uh, behind uh, uh, the wall uh, to be uh, uh, sure that nothing is made wrong uh, or, or something else. Because what is new for the human factor is always something that is terrorized. So I think that we need to, for this is important, to go all together in the same direction with the new uh, progress from one side in the science, but also important for India, like everywhere, safety and quality. Because if you introduce and you uh, uh, try to uh, make better condition to the workers, uh, uh, they also the progress, uh, it will be better and uh, uh, faster. Uh, this is my big experience. Uh, I make a, a check of uh, 70,000 mistakes in the, in the hospital, 70,000 is the biggest uh, database in this field. And all this may error, like Dr. Puri exactly says, uh, are, belong to human factor, but we don't need to forget that also the uh, devices that we are using can influence this 
because the uh, maintenance of uh, all these devices that is very complicated. For, for, for example, I have a microdialysis, cerebral microdialysis for the study of trauma, uh, severe head trauma, and it's very complicated and they need a, a team just for maintenance. So, uh, we, I am not so pessimistic. I think that we can do all together and India is ready, I think, for make this uh, progress uh, and uh, as very human resources before of the money resources, because the human resources for me are much more important of the money. Yes, sir. Very well said, sir. And uh, while we are at it, I mean, uh, there's a question by Dr. Yamini. Uh, regarding the three compartment model, Dr. Kino, sir, if you would uh, like to take this, uh, why are we following the three compartment model instead of the four compartment model, uh, not considering the effect size concentration? Uh, that is the question by Dr. Yamani. Uh, Dr. Kirino, would you like to take this question, sir? I have given them some time for translation. Give some time. Oh, okay, okay. I please speak slowly. Can uh, you repeat Which the question? I don't. Uh, can you repeat the question? I will repeat the question, sir. Doctor, yeah, Dr. Yamini wants to know why we are following the three compartment model instead of the four compartment model not considering the effect size concentration. That is the question. Yes, thank you for this question. I can reply in a short time. Uh, first of all, because of the free compartment model is the uh, compartment that uh, has studied the, the intravenous anesthesia in a complete way. The fourth model is, a, uh, as I told in the beginning, is a just a theoretical model, is a, a, a negligible mo uh, volume. So uh, it's very difficult to study this, this uh, uh, compartment also because uh, as no volume, so we don't know exactly how the uh, concentration of the drug works in this uh, um, uh, compartment. As I told you, I have uh, published recently a um, case study with uh, 30 patients, uh, neurosurgical patients, in which uh, we insert a probe in the brain, in the brain area, just to study uh, how the concentration of the drug, it will be modified by this compartment. Uh, but, uh, it's important because we must remember that the drug acts on this compartment, doesn't act in the first compartment, in the second, in the third, but acts in the brain. All the modification or clinical modification belongs to this compartment. And we find that the concentration of the drug was not the drug that we have, uh, we desired, and we use TCI, all the technicians that can be stabilized, and we were sure to give the same amount of the drug. Why? I cannot reply. Uh, the editor asked a more contribution, a more study, but this study is very difficult, very expensive, and uh, I hope that in the next future, someone take my heredity and can go on. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is another query which has uh, probably also, uh, already been answered by Dr. Hemmerling, sir. And this is regarding the uh, monitoring of deep block of muscle relaxants. So monitoring deep block. Uh, so would you like to add anything to that, sir, Dr. Hemmerling? First of all, avoid deep block. I think that's a general comment. Um, but if you have it, obviously, it, it, you know, if you have no twitch at all, and so I realized that in India, despite what I found in India, mark quantitative monitoring might not be there, but you obviously have nerve stimulator. 
So the only way then is the gold old fashioned way. And I, I still use that sometimes. If you have very deep block, do a titanic stimulation and then try to do the post titanic count. They're very old publications. They go back to the, I don't know, 30 years or so. And there are tables out there, which came from VB Morgans in, in those years. And you could actually then say and calculate depending on the number of twitches you count after your tetanus, when your patient will, or when the muscle function will come back. So that's the only way of doing it with a, a deep block. But in all fairness, since I've been using laryngeal mask a lot, and I'm sure you in India do the same, I hardly do a deep block. It doesn't really happen that often. Um, but obviously you will still have to, you know, you will still have that odd patient where you relax deeply for an appendix, which is done laparoscopically and your patient is in the surgery is finished after 10 minutes. And then that's the way to do. It. So it's called tetanus and then post tetanic count and can be done with any stimulators and you basically place your hand there. It gives you an idea, but those, those tables, you can find them on the internet. As I've said, they've been published a long time ago and they're called post tetanic count tables. Right, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, we have Dr. Rajni Khan, who is mentioned about, uh, he has more than 32 years experience in anesthesia. And he found, uh, he found it very mesmerizing to see the advances uh, that uh, we have been seeing, especially with uh, Dr. Puri, sir, uh, involved in uh, man, uh, these automated devices for the past, uh, since 2004. Sir, uh, there is a question. Uh, uh, what are the uh, top three challenges that the future anesthesiologists and biomedical engineers uh, should focus on. Uh, are there any, what are the challenges that you uh, see, Dr. Puri, sir? Sir, you are muted, sir. Could you please unmute yeah, yourself? Sorry. Uh, so, uh, see, uh, the challenges I said very clearly uh, to the, the controlling anesthesia, there are three components of anesthesia. And I think the easiest which can be done and is what the neuromuscular blockade, which we know what the blockade, what's, uh, it's, it's, it's not difficult to, to monitor and probably it doesn't add that cost and it does not delay start of anesthesia. Uh, other things like uh, uh, the, the hypnotic monitoring, uh, uh, hypnotic control, is always a problem because you need some way of monitoring the EEG or any other, uh, and that costs, not only cost, the reliability and the, the applicability in situations where the surgeon is operating in the same area, disturbances by so many uh, uh, electro, uh, cautery, et cetera. So that's a practical issue. And in the beginning, uh, uh, if all of my anesthesia friends agree, we were talking of patients surviving out of the operating room. Then the situation is going, the patient getting out of the hospital. And now we are talking of patients surviving beyond one year or beyond five years. And these meticulous changes, which we are suggesting at this point of time through automation, will uh, help a lot in those long-term things in addition to the helping anesthetist in the emergency uh, 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 operating room or uh, operating room like cardiac anesthesia where so many things alter heart rate, blood pressure, which normally any anesthetist, any anesthetist uses to control his anesthetic agents. I stopped bothering about uh, altering my anesthetic agents based on blood pressure, heart rate two decades ago when the piss came and I started using automated things directly or indirectly. Now, what engineers need to look into is data. The more the data is accumulated, we can apply machine learning and AI and we can add on to the whatever we are doing with the uh, uh, algorithms like which are rule-based, PD, fuzzy logic, other things, things can improve with that. And that's going to take place. I tell you, the most driver is the industry. Once the regulatory authorities, uh, at this point of time, the TCI was a big issue. 
uh, but the regulate the the hemodynamic controls predicting what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes and controlling drugs or suggesting drugs to be given in this situation are already happening in some parts of the world and is not going to be very costly definitely industry will like to get the money out for the spent on research by hiking the cost of those monitors but definitely they are going to come some part of it is already into your uh, some of the commonly used equipment so uh, we need to collaborate with the engineers Dr. Hammerling himself is a biomedical engineer. We need to collaborate with the engineers more on the ground level rather than working in silos. That is the future. And that's the reason we set up our first biomedical instrumentation devices hub at PGI Chandigarh as a platform to have direct close interaction with the, between the engineers and, uh, uh, and the uh, clinicians. Thank you. I hope I have answered the questions. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, that must have answered the questions. Uh, what we can do is we can allow uh, our uh, audience to unmute themselves if uh, Naveen sir allows. And uh, there are a couple of questions by Dr. Ajit. Uh, there are two. Uh, 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 can we measure end tidal propofol and uh, can we measure from negligible? So uh, what uh, I'll ask uh, sir to uh, allow unmute allow the audience to unmute themselves. Dr. Rajit may ask and interact uh, with the experts. Well, Dr. Dr. Rajit is from UK, St. Thomas's Hospital, St. George's Hospital, and uh, he's an alumni of PGI. Uh, do you want me to answer or do you want, let Dr. Rajit, please. Uh. Uh, sorry to bother you, I think. Uh, thank you very much to allow me to speak on the audience. Uh, I asking the Quinero that he has done a lot of work in uh, uh, first of thing is that Dr. Puri has done a really excellent job. I think I really give thanks to Dr. Puri actually that I have seen also the way he has going forward to implement. I think it is one of the future of anesthesia, no doubt about it. Uh, Dr. Quinella, I to ask you, is there any way we can measure the byproduct of the propofol, which is eliminated from the lungs or from the uh, antidal? I don't know the answer. Probably it might be in the future that that probably more accurate way to giving the TIVA as like as like an antidal carbon dioxide, antidal any isofluorin or uh, sevoflurane. That is, we can we can measure and control better the TIVA and we can more incorporate it with the uh, automated machine rather than because we are measuring the all the automated all automated machine measuring the only first compartment of the pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetics. But we never measure the third volume or what you said about the negligible, uh, negligible volume which is present in the brain substance or things, we never measure. It's very, very difficult to measure. And probably that is the best way to go forward. I don't know, Dr. Puri has done quite a lot of work. Dr. Yes, Dr. Kareno, you would like to respond? Well, uh, Dr. Ajit, your, uh, your question, I'll just uh, briefly uh, touch upon. It's possible for last two decades, people are working on it. It's still in the experimental stage. The breath to breath analysis uh, is being shown by some of the German uh, researchers. And uh, we have been listening that uh, for last 10 years that it may come into practice, but there is a machine available which can give not uh, you know, breath to breath, but yes, it can give the way your sonoclot other things uh, 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 after a few minutes, it can give you the value uh, by, uh, uh, you know, analysis uh, by the side of the patient. Definitely, it will help in controlling the concentration. But again, the problem here, as Dr. Crino said, is it's one is pharmacokinetics, another is pharmacodynamics still that pharmacodynamics needs to be assessed. 
But definitely, the way isofluorine and other things we are assessing anti-idal, uh, the way the, the day football uh, estimation becomes practical, uh, uh, it will uh, uh, be the, the, the uh, it will be much easier for the people to control. Uh, uh, but again, everything costs. Yes, money. The second uh, thing is hello. recently, sorry, uh, recently there is an an um, a NAT five has published about a year ago. It's a lot of questions about the awareness when you're using the uh, TIVA. I think how we are going to minimize this awareness of the gap, I think that needs to be seen in the future. Dr. Ajit, uh, regarding to your first question, can, can we use uh, measurement of the end idle propofol? Since last 15 years, Japan, Japan is a scientist and anesthesiologist are doing excellent work on the proton transfer mass spectrometry, which measures the anti-idol propofol. And uh, it will be in the experimental say, uh, uh, stage, as Dr. Puri said. So I think it can be measured when in within 10 years, we will have that machines also in our hand in our OT. I think we need, uh, I have been to India recently, and we because the what we are going forward means we need to a uh, sustainable development where probably another 10 years we will not able to see any isofluorine or desfluorine in our anesthetic machine. It yes. will be completely disappear. Yes, yes. So we need some sustain, sustainable development because we, the, we are the anesthetists, one of the one of the doctors which maximum producing the carbon footprint. So how are we going to abolish, how are we going to reduce it? That is a very important point for discussion of the whole of the society, because we are not going to practice the anesthesia in the future. And, and the future generation are going to do it. So how are you going to do it? That is important, but we need more training of the students, more training of, we don't have any TIVA machine in the theaters, we have seen. So we need some development in the training system. So everybody should get some TIVA training, uh, how to give the anesthesia, how to give, because it's a completely different method of giving the anesthesia when you're using the TIVA. Dr. Rajit, for that, we are coming in India tremendously with the TIVA TCI workshop. First workshop nationally we have done in April. And recently in Gujarat also, we are doing TCI TIVA workshop. And recent uh, future also, we are doing TCI TIVA workshop where we have a simulation of TIVA trainers and everything to our delegates. And probably Acromed Alleyweld also coming in the Indian scenario. They have appointed a dealer also. So in within five years, TCI TIVA will be the major portion of the change in the NSSI practice in India also. No, because I have recently I was and, there. Uh, if, I may, if I may add, sir, if I may add, sir, today's today's webinar is again a step in that direction only. Just to apprise of what is going on, what are the technologies that we have, and to create awareness amongst the uh, society. So yes, yes uh, as you said. Uh, uh, it's still not very popular, as again, sir has mentioned, Dr. Puri has mentioned, it all depends on cost, so we have to change our mindset. But with the uh, uh, initiatives so, like this, uh, which ISA has taken today, we'll be creating more awareness and spreading this. Yes, Thanks. We have a monster doctor. Uh, PhD calls are also, sir. Any comments from your side, sir, over the call? You have to unmute yourself, sir. Sir, you have to unmute. Am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have no comments to make, but I have an observation that it was an excellent webinar on particularly on the auspicious day of the Teacher's Day. I say has done a commendable job in arranging such a webinar. All the three speakers were excellent, superb, mind-boggling. We must understand that innovation and upgradation is the key to advancement 
and improvement in the patient care. We have to have, we have to continue with our vigor and vitality to ensure that upgradation and innovation continues. It may take time, we may be a bit far behind, but we have to be on the top. All the best, Naveen, and all the best, ISA. Excellent program. Really, very, very excellent and very absorbing program. The discussion by everyone, learned speak, uh, people, was really, really superb. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for those kind words, sir, and happy Teacher's Day to you, sir. Thank you. Over to you, Nishant. Are there any queries uh, left in the chat box? No, sir. I don't think there are any. Uh, Dr. Arun here. Yes, sir. Yeah, Arun, go ahead. Just to give an analogy, because of so much discussion, I can say closed loop anesthesia is like Tesla car, self-driven car. So if you feel like that in India from manual car, we have moved to automatic car. Next is self-driven car. So like that, if I say TIVA was effective, adding of TCA was safe. Now for the postology of anesthesia, CLADs will add efficiency. So anesthesia will become effective, safe, as well as efficient in the future. Thank yeah. you, sir. That was well said, sir. Thank you for this word. I would like just to say my final <laughs> consideration. Do you fly with the aircraft without automatic pilot? No one, because it's crazy. So TCI is the automatic pilot for anesthesia, but automatic pilot doesn't make unnecessary the pilot, no, because you need to land and to go up. And the anesthesiologist is the pilot of anesthesia. So he need to, to, uh, to start the anesthesia and to close the anesthesia. This is a, require a human activity, a human factor. Thank you. Sorry for my talk again, but uh, I would like to thank my colleagues in India that says a very good word and just to explain the difference between an automatic system and manual system. Right, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Okay, Quino, and uh, I think, Nishant, we are now coming to the close of uh, today's webinar. Uh, the discussion went on very nicely and uh, we had a uh, uh, so, uh, nice discussion going on and I look forward uh, for an uh, excellent interaction with the between ISA and World Siva uh, in the coming months also and we'll, meet, uh, we'll try to meet physically also. Sir, I would like to announce one thing from Indian Society of Anesthesia to Dr. Quirina. In future, we are planning to come with the Indian Society of uh, Intravenous Anesthesia with like-minded people within one year. So that is what we are Thank you so much. Okay. Namaste. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll request uh, uh, Dr. Giri uh, to please uh, say uh, uh, some concluding remarks and then we close the uh, this particular webinar. Thank you all. It was a good though. We planned that we will finish a lot of hours uh, in time go uh, long and uh, people had interest and uh, there was good interaction also. So as uh, you told the future may be Tiva in uh, coming years, we may be changing uh, in India also from our conventional anesthesia to Tiva. This may be a beginning and uh, we expect to have more uh, uh, webinars, CMS or physical conferences in future. We have collaboration with the World Civil and uh, we will see further progress and it will be the duty of ISA to educate and uh, bring the new things to our members and uh, know that maybe the people who are in the medical college new coming, they will know that but, uh, old timers like us who are not in the medical college will have to get updated and this webinars will definitely help us. Hope that we will have more and more and future. And we will Thank you. Thank you. So thank you all the esteemed faculty for joining us today, uh, all the speakers and chairpersons. Uh, good evening from Indian Society of Anesthesiologists. Long live ISA, Gay ISN, Gay Hind.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Naveen. Thank you to Thank you, all. Thank you for your very, very warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Karino. And hope to see you in Shillong two months later. Both Get better. well soon. <laughs> Thank you, Naveen. Thank you, uh, Dr. Venkatgiri, and all the members of the governing body of uh, ISA for uh, helping us to carry on this uh, first uh, SIVA uh, ISA webinar. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Nishan, Dr. Arun, Dr. Dr. Nishan, Dr. Dr. Nishan, Professor Dr. 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 Nishan Sai for coordinating, and my co chairperson, Dr. Giri, and Dr. Molitar Joshi, and Dr. Ajit sir for his expert comments from uh, UK, and Dr. Anjali Bure, Vice President, and uh, other office bearers of ISM National. Good evening. Thank you all.